my personal chef business has some major differences now compared to when I got started 17 years ago. If you've watched my other videos, I talk about the areas of your personal chef business that you need when you're, you know, the decisions about what you want to do, setting up the business, getting clients, and mindset. And when I look at where I started to where I am now, my business has changed a lot in every area, except for one. So last week, I went into every area, what it looked like when I was just getting started. So if you missed it, you can watch that video here. I'm trying to get super fancy and put the link in, but it might be here. All right. You might think, well, if you're doing things differently now, why shouldn't I just do what you're doing now? And that might sound okay, but if you're just doing what I'm doing now without an understanding of why, it probably won't work out anyway. You might not agree with some of the things I do, and this is your business too. You get to set it up and choose what you want. But it will be really helpful to hear what I did when I was starting out so that you understand why I do it differently now and why I coach people who are starting their personal chef businesses to not make the mistakes I did and do things the way I did. Okay, first of all, there is a big difference in how I plan for my business now versus what I used to do. I talked about how I used to do things like write a huge business plan that had a ton of info in it that wasn't really relevant to a personal chef business. And if you've tried to grab a free business plan template off the internet or maybe met with someone from the SBA, the Small Business Administration, for a free consult, you've probably seen, you know exactly what I mean, right? It's hard to explain to someone exactly what you're doing when you're starting a personal chef business to someone who doesn't know anything about it and when you're just getting started and it they keep trying to pigeonhole you as a caterer or you know whatever else to put it in their frame of reference or experience with small businesses that are starting up that need capital and stuff and personal chefs don't so I struggled through writing one of those massive business plans. I even had software to write a business plan, right? And that was fine. Although at the end of the day, it just took up way too much time for what it was. But the worst part about it was I proudly checked off my list that I got it done, filed it away, and never looked at it again. Oh, that is not how a plan is used. Your plan, your business plan is like a map. You don't make it once and then never have to look at it again, right? On your journey to where you want to go. Think about GPS. In three miles, you're going to turn right. In a quarter mile, turn right. Turn right in 100 feet. Turn right now. <laughs> and if by some reason you still don't turn right, it reroutes you and changes the directions so that you can still get to the same destination you wanted to get to in the first place. So in the Personal Chef Business Academy, there's a very clear, very simple one page business plan that honestly turns into two pages after you write it out. But it's specifically tailored to a personal chef business and it is a tool to be used to keep you focused and headed in the direction towards your destination, no matter what that is for you. For some, it's full-time, others, it's part-time, maybe all the services, maybe you're just focused on meal prep or, you know, a certain income target. This is important because it's really hard to stay focused, right? I spent a long time feeling like I didn't have enough clients, I wasn't making enough money, I wasn't sure what to do because of this. So now, I have my business plan, and even more importantly, I have yearly goals that I break down into quarterly and monthly tasks, so I always know exactly what I'm working on, 
and most importantly, why? And if you're having trouble making the decisions when trying to start your business, I'm going to do a whole separate video on that. So be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell so that you never miss a video. So the second major thing that's different now in my business is the services I offer. I used to try and do everything. I had weekly meal prep clients. I would take any catering job that came across. I, whether it fit into my specialty or not, I taught demos and hands-on classes and all sorts of experiences like that. So the short story about why I don't do catering or classes now is the priority for me right now is to be working weekdays on a consistent schedule. In the beginning, because I was just trying to focus on making money, I would do any job that came my way. And the problem with this for me was that it would take me forever to create the wheel for every totally different catering, every different type of class or experience that someone wanted. And then the next person that came by would want something totally different and over and over and over again. And because of this, my work was really inconsistent. So over time, I decided that I was only going to do catering or classes or whatever for people who were already clients for my personal chef services. And what I was able to do from focusing on just one service was to really concentrate on making the decisions and then not thinking about them anymore, focusing on it, concentrating on my marketing, getting my messaging dialed in, and everything on getting clients for personal chef services, AKA meal prep. And if I had to say a hundred times when I told someone that I was a personal chef and the person would say, oh, you're a caterer. And I would say, actually, I don't cater, but let me tell you what I do. I come to your home, prepare all your meals for the week so that you don't have to shop, cook, or clean up. They're just magically in your fridge ready to eat. And then it became an easy discussion because they knew whether they were a potential client or not. Third, I tried the same shotgun approach with my marketing. Last week on the video, I listed an easy dozen things I tried in the beginning to get clients. And there were a few problems with this. I didn't have a solid marketing plan that I could follow, so I was all over the place. I wasted a lot of time being confused and overwhelmed and complaining that I was an introvert and I didn't like people and a bunch of other BS. I didn't focus on getting better at my chosen marketing strategy. I would try something once and just decide it didn't work if I didn't get a client. Wow. To be honest, I am feeling super proud about my behavior back then, but that's sarcasm, by the way. This is just how human beings are, right? Our brains always want to feel good and safe, and it feels a lot better to short-term just snuggle on the couch with Netflix and a pint of ice cream than it does to, like, go to a networking event by yourself with a hundred people you don't know and actually talk to them or keep doing something that you're not good at over and over so that you can get better at it. Because we're not gonna be great the first time we do something usually, right? It's called practice. Nobody hits a home run their first time up to bat. Even at T-ball, it's sitting right there in front of you on a tee and you still with it. But you keep swinging right? Don't change sports because you didn't hit a home run the first time you came up to bat. <laughs> I didn't know what would work and what would not work for a personal chef business because there are some things that work better for businesses and some things that don't work for businesses of different types. I didn't have a marketing background or anything. I didn't know what, you know, to do. So I had to try everything to figure it out. And I share that here with you in these videos. And that's why in the Personal Chef Business Academy, there's so much on marketing specifically for personal chef businesses. Plus, I work together with people one-on-one. -on -one. 
because there are some things that can work like Facebook or Thumbtack or referral partners, but you have to learn them and get good at them and you won't be in the beginning, especially if you're trying to do it by yourself. And then there are just some things that don't work for a personal chef like direct mail, right? And you're not gonna know that magically when you're just starting out if you're working by yourself. And finally, the last area, mindset. You have to have an entrepreneurial mindset. And that's something that you probably didn't learn in school or anything. And there are really two parts to this. You need to be able to manage your mind around what we just talked about. The learning, the failing, the confusion, the disappointment, and all the mental drama that comes up around starting and building and running your own business. It is totally 100% different than being an employee. If you have a job and your boss tells you to do X by five o'clock, you do X, right? And if you do it wrong and you work in a decent place, they tell you what you did wrong and teach you how to fix it. They probably showed you how to do it in the first place too, right? But when you're your own boss, you decide you want to do X this week. And then you're super busy on Monday. And on Tuesday, you have family stuff, so you're not working on your business. And on Wednesday, you remember, ooh, ooh, I'm supposed to do X. And you start on it, and it gets really hard and a little confusing, so you decide to take a break. And Thursday, you realize it's almost the end of the week and you haven't gotten anything done. So you start to feel terrible and you sit down to work on it and you spend a few hours trying to figure it, figure it out. And you're Googling and working on it and getting overwhelmed and frustrated and you spend hours working on it and you still don't get it finished. And Friday comes and well, it's the weekend, right? Pretty much. So you decide to you earn spending some time out with friends. And then next week, it's Monday and lather, rinse, repeat that over again. Because for most of us as human beings, it's a thousand times harder to figure out everything by yourself when you're doing something new, then it's a thousand times harder to self-motivate and it's harder to honor self-made deadlines instead of external ones, right? If someone else tells you to do something, that's a whole different deal than when you're trying to honor something you said yourself. I still struggle with this. Even in making these videos, I schedule a time on my calendar and then I get interrupted by family. Hello, kids home for the summer. Or my mom wants to see me. Or it gets hard and I allow myself to get distracted by something easier. My favorite here goes something like, oh, you know what? I have to do the dishes first and then I'll work on the videos because it's more obvious if I was doing something I really wanted to do, right? If I blew off doing the videos to go out to lunch or read or watch Ted Lasso, I would feel guilty because I knew I should be getting work done. But if I'm doing something I don't want to do, like the dishes, it's more justifiable oh, I have to do this too. I mean, it has to get done. And so what I've learned about myself is that there's doing what I've scheduled on my calendar at the time it's scheduled, or if I'm not, why? Really, what's the reason why I'm not doing what I wrote down on my calendar? And most of the time, it comes down to I'm choosing to do something else to get out of doing something that feels hard. Now, this is just one example of managing yourself in your mind that you have to do as an entrepreneur. And this is exactly where coaching comes in. This is why I don't just have a course that you can take by yourself because there's a whole component of having your own business that most of us have to learn. And the fastest, best way to do that is with a coach. Sure, there are all the checklisty things that you have to do. There are new skills you have to learn. And then there are all the reasons that you're not doing them. Because if you could do it by yourself, you already would have, right? If you were superhuman and didn't suffer from procrastination or confusion or overwhelm or avoidance, 
or getting bummed out about your lack of progress and setbacks and just blowing off work and not doing the things that you really want to be doing, then you wouldn't need any of this. But we're all human and we all get better, faster results with help. So if you want complete training in one place about exactly how to build your personal chef business and one-on-one -on -one coaching for your humanness and working through hard new things and finding new clients and getting over not hitting your goals so that you can break through all that, that new entrepreneur stuff and get to the dream business that you want to have, your own schedule you want to work, the money you want to make, the food you want to cook, come join me in the Personal Chef Business Academy. We can work on this together for as long as you need to. You have forever access to the training. We have forever group calls and you will get one-on-one -on -one calls with me. There is a link right below this video where you can learn all about it because the clients are out there and they are hungry for what you're cooking.